BanjoBenClark.com. I am that Banjo Ben here on the site to teach you how to play banjo and guitar and mandolin, but this is Banjo Week and it's really fun. We're going to learn 10 smoking hot delicts. You know, oftentimes in our banjo songs and our bluegrass songs, we're, we're stuck with two measures at the end of phrases. Not stuck with, we have the opportunity with two measures at the end of phrases over a five chord, over that D chord, and we're looking for cool things to do there. A couple of uh, years ago, I taught a bag of licks uh, doing 10 of these delicts, but they were more straight ahead, just kind of what you're used to hearing. And this time I wanted to go more in an advanced direction and, and give you some, some more advanced licks, some that mess with the timing a little bit, bring some bends in, bring some single string stuff in. Uh, we're, we're gonna have a lot of fun. We're gonna use our middle finger a lot to pick str um, strings other than that first string. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna walk you through each one of these 10 licks. I'm not only gonna teach those to you, and you've got the tab and the jam track MP3s, of course, like always, but I also wanna talk about different variations and, and the elements of these licks, because my goal is not for you to have to memorize 10 D licks and carry them to your next jam, even though that is helpful. But what I want you to do is see how we build these more advanced D licks so that you can begin to build your own. And that's when it gets really, really fun. Let's jump into this. Before we jump into these licks, I wanna do just a little bit of theory and just bear with me through that because theory is always what allows you to go further on your own. You've gotta have some theoretical understanding. And, and what I want to maybe introduce to you is that whenever you're playing these licks over this five chord, over this D chord, and you're in the key of G, there's almost no note that's out of bounds for you. Uh, because we're able to not only borrow from all the notes in a D major scale and in a D blues scale, a minor pentatonic scale, but you're also able to borrow from the C and borrow from the G. And whenever you combine all those, it literally opens up most every fret on the banjo for us to choose from to build these licks. And you're going to see that with these 10 licks today. I think we use every fret on the banjo except for a couple. And I'll tell you the two. The two that I kind of stay away from whenever I'm doing D licks, and even then I may play them sometimes and just resolve them. It depends on how outside the box I want to get. But the two notes and the two frets that I want to stay away from when I'm doing these D licks is the D sharp or the E flat, because it's only a half step away from the D note, which is what the chord is, the bass note that we're playing over. And that would be the first fret here. And that would be the first fret here. Or the, the fourth fret here, but like I said, even sometimes, I even sometimes play those, but all the rest of them. Are really, really open for us to use and to bring in these more advanced, bluesy, jazzy sound and delicts. And again, you're gonna see that today. Let's go ahead and jump into one and you'll see what I'm talking about. And whenever we com combine these uh, bluesy notes, that are outside that D major scale, and you mess with some timing, you throw in some bends and things like that, we're really going to end up with some cool stuff. So each one of these turnarounds is going to be a two measures of D and then back to two measures of G. I just structured it like that so that we could uh, have some good practice um, uh, chord progressions for our jam tracks. So we're going to walk down into this D note. And we see D number one. That's just D lick number one. And it's going to start out pretty um, traditional. That's what measure three going into measure four sounds like. But then we're going to introduce some of these blues notes that I've talked about. We're gonna pull off down to that dominant seven. And then I'm gonna use this flat third. Well, it's a flat third over G. In, in the key of D, it would be a flat six, that B flat. And that's what I want to, to, uh, to really harp on again. I've already said it, 
but we can take our blues notes from G, so, and we can use all of those over these D licks and they're gonna sound really good, especially because the band is heading toward a G chord. Does that make sense? So if we're heading toward that G chord, we can begin to borrow those notes from the chord that's coming up and make our notes over the D chord sound really cool. And that's what we're doing with that third fret. That's a very common note whenever we're playing our G licks and we're gonna borrow from it over the, over the chord of D. Now that last little third fret measure four, you see the curved arrow with the quarter? That means it's just choked. So I'm just gonna barely bend it. You can bend either toward the ceiling or toward the floor, I don't care. And then measure five and six, that's going to be the same lick over the G chord every time that just allows us to do the little turnaround, just the regular old G lick. Walking down into the next one. So let's think about what we've done here in D lick number one. Again, the first measure of it is quite uh, traditional. And then we're going to do this pull off and really this is a guitar lick. I, I would play something like this on guitar all the time. And so we're just converting that over to a banjo. Now, as we'll see going forward, all of these pull-offs, um, they can be either eighth note pull-offs or they can be 16th note pull-offs. And I want you to pay attention to that measure four. That pull-off from two to one is happening at an eighth note speed. So if we were to count that out, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four, you might be tempted to push that pull-off uh, into a 16th note timing. And that's gonna be okay. We're gonna do that later. But if you do that, you're gonna you're gonna kind of uh, finish the measure before the rest of the band does. So the way that this one's drawn out, just make sure that you do an eighth note pull off. But I want you to get used to using that second fret. I want you to get used to using that third fret and this first fret over a D chord when we're playing these bluesy licks. Just get used to that because those notes make up a, a lot of really cool D licks and maybe you've never thought about using those particular notes over the, the, key, the chord of D. Let's look at the next one. It's really fun, it's completely different. It uses some of the same notes, but we're going to involve more of a theme, okay? I'm going to do some forward rolls and we're going to walk our target note down chromatically. Another thing that we're gonna bring into this lick is inside rolls. Maybe you're only used to using your middle finger on the first string. I'm gonna ask you to use it on the second string. That's called an inside roll, and I have lessons for that on the site. But the position that I want you to grab is just two and three here, and I want you to do that inside roll in the middle three strings. Then you're gonna do it again, this time bar. You can either scoot your ring finger down and grab that second fret, or just bar like I do with your middle finger. Do it again down to the first fret. So that's what makes up that uh, measure. You hear that? How's and it's gonna keep going down to this open B string. You might think, an open B string over a D chord. Well, that's what I'm talking about. We're heading toward a G. We can begin to borrow from those G chord notes. We're also gonna change our fret on the third string from second to third fret, just to get a really chromatic, gritty sound. And then a really quick, a quick um, this time a 16th note pull off, and then an eighth note pull off. So very slowly measures seven and eight, slower than that, you can use the TEF tab files, or don't forget that you can slow down the speed of this video by clicking the little gear icon and watching that again. Let's do one more in this video segment, then we'll press into the rest. Um, this time we're going to, um, instead of kind of coming from the top to the bottom, we're going to go from the bottom to the top. Measure 11. We'll stay busy down low just for a few notes. And again, this hammer on in measure 11 is going to be an eighth note hammer on, so don't rush it unless you want to, unless you want that sound. But I want to hear one and two and three. One and two and three. This whole lick sounds like this. And what makes this lick very cool is that this, the, the top note gets syncopated. 
Okay, it's kind of like the one before, but the top note is often the note that our ear is drawn to. That's kind of the, the money note up there. And I love um, making that unpredictable. So I have it jumping around and coming in at various times. And my time as a snare drum, uh, you know, a military band snare drum player in high school, I think comes, comes uh, to help me at these uh, instances because I can hear that real syncopation. Those types of things. And that's what we're doing with that top note. Listen to that again. Cool, huh? So again, we have another middle inside roll at the end of measure 11, right here. And then hold that position down for measure 12. And I will also say to try to accent that note, the notes that you're playing with your middle finger, it just gives it more of that groove, more of that grit. Now, let's dive into the rest of these licks. If you're watching somewhere else besides BanjoBenClark.com, you can come over to the site, join us as a Gold Pick member, get this whole lesson, be able to download all the tabs, and get the Jamtrack MP3s, not only for this one, for hundreds of others. You really need to come check that out. If you're watching on the site already as a Gold Pick member, just click on the next lick video, and we will continue with lick number four.